All right then, what we've got today is a 2012 Ford Mondeo 2 litre diesel. It's a nice blue estate. In fact, I quite like this car. I like the colour. It, you know, this, this nice dark shiny metallic blue, it reminds me of the uh, Cadbury's chocolate wrappers. They used to come in like a blue wrapper. It was really nice. It's very smart paintwork. But the job I've got to do on this car isn't so smart. In fact, this is, this is an automatic gearbox. This is what they call the power shift, the six speed automatic or semi-automatic gearbox. I'm gonna replace the gearbox horn and filter. I've never done this before. I've never had anything to do with these gearboxes whatsoever in the history of my life. So this is a first for me, but we're gonna see how we go. And I will say, this is the first time, this will probably be the last time I ever change the oil on one of these gearboxes. I'm just gonna pop through to the office. <laughs> in fact, I'll go as far to say, all I really know about these power shift gearboxes, they've got two wet clutches fitted in them. They are a very, very technical gearbox. And one of the clutches operates the odd gears and the other clutch operates the even gears. That's about the limit of my knowledge. So today, I'm gonna to stick to just replacing this oil and filter, which apparently is critical. It has to be done every 60,000 kilometers, which is quite a short cycle, you know? And the oil does come out black, apparently, and you must put the right oil in it. Jesus, well, you know, whenever I'm recording a video, someone goes in the MOT bay and blows the flipping horn. Anyway, I wanted to pass the buck with this job, but it didn't work out, so I'm stuck with it. I've got to do it. I think I'm going to go and see Monica and get myself a headache tablet. <laughs> Mrs. Monica? Do you know, I'm coming on with a right... Here. Gee, thanks. So, how the heck do you know that I've got a headache? Because you're so bloody predictable. Did you know, Miss M, there are people who have messaged me who are threatening to unsubscribe if you're not in each video? Well, you need to make sure I'm in each video then. So you're right. Predictability. See ya. Anyway, flipping heck. Let's get the hell on with this video because at the moment we're getting absolutely nowhere. So here it is. I went to our local motor factors and we purchased this kit so I didn't have to buy everything separate from Ford and I wasn't going to go to Ford anyway because I dread to think how much Ford are going to charge for this. But anyway, to get the old packaging out of the way, what we have is six litres of oil and in this particular kit they give you a brand new oil filter complete with housing ah, and a new seal. So first things first, I'm going to fit our new oil seal to our oil filter housing. And before I put this seal back in, I will put a bit of oil around this seal so it screws in nicely and doesn't snag the seal at all. The filter itself only fits in one way. So the little nipple bit will be facing, you know, the, the open end of the, of the filter casing. So we've got six litres of this ATF DCG, which stands for dual clutch gear. We better not waste any, because I'm telling you now, this oil, well this little kit, which is like an aftermarket kit, not the genuine stuff, cost 128 pound. That's not cheap. Can you imagine how much Ford are gonna charge for the same oil, or their, their specification of the oil? <laughs> now before I start, I have used the Ford Etis system to get my information, 
which is pretty much Ford's digital workshop manual. I have to say though, it's pretty unclear trying to follow their instructions what you're supposed to do. It's, it's badly done if you ask me. It's like there's not much dialogue and the pictures are rubbish. But anyway, I've deciphered it as best I can. The first thing I will say, there does not appear to be any temperature, like is the engine supposed to be cold? Is it supposed to be warm? I don't know. They don't tell you on this Etis system. So I'm assuming you can drain this oil as is. But what I'm gonna say is, I've, I've taken this car around the block for like a 10 minute run. So I should assume the oil in the gearbox is around about 30, 40 degrees, because at least if it's a little bit warm, it's gonna drain a lot better. It's gonna flow better out of the drain bung. And especially if you're in a very cold country in minus temperatures, you wouldn't want to be draining your oil when it's that cold. You'd want the oil to be a little bit warm. It's like standard protocol. Anyway, the first thing we're gonna do is get in the car because there's a procedure you've got to follow which I find bizarre as well, but I'm going to show you. So assuming your car is on level ground, obviously you wouldn't be doing this on a hill, would you now? You apply your handbrake, your transmission is in the park position, you will then start the engine up. So with your foot applied firmly on the foot brake, you would take it out of park and into reverse and hold it there for 20 seconds. You would then go to neutral, hold it for 20 seconds and so on into drive and then into your manual selector part. Then back into drive, 20 seconds, neutral 20 seconds and working your way back up into park. I don't know why you've got to run it through the gears before you drain the gearbox oil, if that is what you've got to do. But that seems to be the way. I can, one, one thing I can say, it's not going to do any harm. At this point, you might want to think about putting on some protection. Under your bonnet, on your airbox, you're going to have to disconnect your mass airflow sensor wire and remove the airbox complete from the car. Now the airbox is out of the way, the first thing I'm going to do is just blow some compressed air on top of the gearbox to get rid of any dust or anything kicking around. Because when I take the filler bung out, I don't want any dirt or de debris falling into that hole. <laughs> so with the airbox removed, on top of the gearbox you'll see an 8mm Allen key head, which you put your socket in. And I'm going to use a thick bar because sometimes these bungs can be pretty tight. But that's loose. And now we're going to remove this bung. I guess it's going to let gravity into the gearbox. That's it under the bonnet for the minute. I'm just going to take the car up in the air. Now you don't have to remove the passenger side inner wheel arch liners to get to the oil filter. You can get to it from underneath. But I've just removed it just to show you. There's a little tab here which like clicks into the oil filter housing. It stops it from undoing. So you've got to like pull that tab back a little bit. And at the same time, you can get a socket or spanner on the filter, pull the tab out and then undo the filter. And once you've undone it so far, the tab's not going to be a problem anymore. But then we can, we can now undo this filter and I have positioned a drain bowl underneath just in case we lose a little bit. All right, that's starting to leak a little bit now. So I'll just remove this out of the way. It's a bit of a messy job. I'll just take this filter out and have a quick look. Yeah, it looks a bit dirty. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this filter in an oil drainer now and, and drain the remaining oil out of this uh, housing. So you'd normally remove this filter, fling it in the, the oil drainer, you would take this seal off and replace that oil seal, but as our new kit comes with a new filter and casing and seal, this whole lot can now go in the bin. Now this is a 2012 Mondeo and there are two drain bungs. 
I'll come back to that later, but it's because you've got two chambers in here. And when you refill it, it fills up the first chamber, it overflows, like overflows a bulkhead and then refills the second chamber. Then it will flow out the level bung. But I'll explain that better when I come back to that a bit later on. So the first thing I'm gonna do is undo these two drain bungs but I'm going to measure the oil that's coming out of them, if you know what I mean, because it takes six litres, that's what you get in the kit. So I'm going to make sure I'm getting around about six litres coming out of it, then I know exactly the same amount is going back in. There you go. Yuck. Okay, I'll let that drain out. It's actually, this oil has been replaced here before and it's still not too bad looking. I'll ask him later how many miles it's done since the last oil change. I'll undo our rear drain bung and I have another clean container so I can catch the oil out of this one. There you go. I'll let this one drain out and then I'll evaluate how much we've drained out. I'm just going to take a piece of rag and clean up the, around the, the oil filter housing. While the oil's still draining, I've actually got the kettle on because I'm going to have a cup of tea. But I'll, I'll fit this oil filter while I'm waiting anyway. Anyhow, before I actually pop this filter back on, you're supposed to fill it up with some oil first. So I'm just going to try and guesstimate how much of that <coughs> overflowing it. And with that, filter in that's that's pretty full now and also I'm going to take a little bit of the oil on my finger and just go around the seal just so it screws in nicely and that seal doesn't get snagged or damaged refitting it so I'll pop this filter back where it goes be careful getting it on the thread you don't get it cross threaded you don't really want that to happen I'm actually using a wobbly bar to get a socket on the base of this actual housing and now I'll whack that up. If you want to tighten this up properly, the torque setting for this housing is 15 newton meters. So obviously once the oil is draining, it's probably going to take, I don't know, 10 minutes or so to drain it. It's a good opportunity to either do something else or stand around like a lazy bastard and drink tea. Cheers. Now all the drain and level bungs on this gearbox, they have like a little O-ring as a seal. So if you inspect it, these ones look perfectly fine, so I'm quite happy just to refit these and use them again. Well, the oil's practically come down to a very slow drip now, so I'll give the, uh, the holes a wipe and refit our sump bungs. That's one in, and that's all the way in. If you do wish to torque these drain bungs and level bungs up properly, they're 43 newton meters. So I'll just torque this one up. That's it. Right then, this is all the oil I've drained out. So in this pot, we've got just under two and a half liters. And in this one, we've got three and a half liters, bang on. So by my count, that's just under six litres, but if you include the little bit of oil that was in the oil filter casing, that would probably make it practically bang on six litres I've drained out of that gearbox. So going on that piece of information, as long as we put the full six litres back in that gearbox, we can't be far wrong. So you will be needing some kind of funnel to put in the, uh, the filler hole on the top of the gearbox. And now we can start adding our oil. That's lovely and clean. In fact, the old oil wasn't that bad anyway. And here goes litre number two. If you've ever heard the term uh, for oil being called liquid gold, this probably brings a whole new meaning to it, the price of this oil. Flipping egg, when, when, <laughs> when I saw the price, this is aftermarket oil, I nearly fell over backwards. I thought that's quite expensive. And this is it, litre number six going in. Obviously minus the little bit I used to uh, top up the oil filter with. 
But as long as we get all six litres in this gearbox at the end of the job, we know we're going to be pretty safe. That's it. It's all in. Splendid. And just for the time being, I'm going to refit the top-up bung just loosely. So just for the moment, I'm going to reconnect the mass airflow sensor just so we can start the car up. So now, I can get in. I'm going to start the car up and I'm going to run it through all the gears again. So obviously with your foot on the brake, you're now going to put it into reverse and hold it there for 20 seconds. And then you're going to move down to the next gear, the neutral, 20 seconds again, into drive 20 seconds, and then across to the S 20 seconds, and then back up through and back up to park, holding it in for 20 seconds in each gear. And this buzzing noise is getting really annoying, but now, 20 seconds in reverse, back into park, and that stupid buzzer's shut up. And obviously now you can switch the engine off. Right, first up once again, disconnect your mass airflow sensor wire, and remove the airbox, and remove the filler bung from the top of the gearbox. There we go, get that out of the way. I'm just gonna blow an airline around that, that level bung because if I have to catch any fluid that drains out of there, I don't want there to be any crap in there with it. Just make sure that area is all nice and totally clean. I've positioned a clear measuring jug underneath the level bung in case anything does drain out. When I fill it up, I can catch that fluid again and reuse it. So I'm now gonna remove this level bung and catch anything that might come out. There. Now we've got some draining out now. So I'm gonna catch all of this. So the thing is now, while the oil was draining out of that level bung, or level bung hole, we will wait until it, it, it slows down to a drip. That's nearly half a litre that's come out of that level bung. So you, it might be worth having some extra spare fluid if you don't want to reuse this but I'm pretty confident, because I cleaned around the gearbox and blew any crap away, that this oil is still good to reuse. And so the idea now is to continue topping up the gearbox until the oil starts to run out of that level bung again. And once it gets from a run down to a drip, that's it. That's, it all, that's the level checked and it's all finished. It's come out of a little bit of a run down here. Now it's, now it's come to a drip again. So now I can actually refit this level bung for the last time. And then we'll talk that back up to 43 Newton meters. And obviously, as you've had oil draining down the side of the gearbox, get some brake cleaner and give it a good clean up. Cause you don't want any dripping oil after you've done the job. You want it to all to be nice and clean as it originally was. So that's everything back together. Our both our drain bungs are now tight. Our level bung is tight. I've sprayed brake cleaner around and cleaned up any oil that was kicking around the bottom of the gearbox that needs to be cleaned up. I've had a look around as we've run the engine and uh, there's no leaks. Obviously check the oil filter's not leaking or anything stupid like that. We will check again once we've been on a road test. So that's it. Our top up bung is securely tightened up. Air cleaner box back in, everything tightened up. The wire into our mass airflow sensor, we can connect back on and refit our front battery cover, which I had to take out the way to, in order to get the air box out of the way. Done. Just going for a road test. Be back in a minute. I've just been for a road test, and do you know what? It just drives like any other automatic. 
I, I actually wouldn't be able to tell the difference. I will say though, when it's changing up through the gears, the rev meter's like bang, bang. It's really quick. It, it does change gear really fast. But yeah, it drives absolutely fine. All the six speed gears are there. Great. The one thing I do know is that we drew six litres of oil out of that transmission and we've refitted six litres of oil. And the, uh, the levels are fine. So I'm happy, the job's done. I'm gonna put it up on the air and I'm gonna check underneath one last time for any leaks. If everything's good, I'm gonna refit the under tray and then the car can, can go, uh, go back to the customer. Actually, before I finish this video, guess what? I've actually got the owner of this Ford Mondeo with me today. So I'm going to ask him a few questions and he's agreed to answer. Funnily enough, because he's just paid his bill and he's still smiling. <laughs> anyway, Dave, you've owned this car for a while now. How many miles has it been since you last had the automatic transmission oil replaced on your car? 30,000 miles. 30,000 miles and he's just had to pay a bill quite an expensive bill I must say but we did give him a bit of discount because he let us use his car anyway my second question this particular car has got a bit of a story to it shut up when you bought this car you took it to a garage to have their automatic gearbox changed and they put the wrong oil in it and you didn't know this until you started driving it Tell me what happened and how you realised there was a problem. Okay, we were driving it, it was very jerky when it pulled away, it snatched, and also on change, when the automatic box changed, um, changed gear, it was very snatchy then, it was uneven rough. Uh, I just happened to be down our local Ford garage and I mentioned it to them, and the guy immediately said they put the wrong oil in. Um, and then the Ford garage actually did the first change for me. And since then, brilliant. I'd say he was very lucky because having the wrong oil fitting in one of these power shift gearboxes could have spelt disaster. And I can tell you something, you won't get no warranty through putting the wrong oil in a gearbox. And if that gearbox was to blow, that's going to be worth it. Now my phone, no, he's blowing his horn. Now my phone's ringing. I'm getting distracted with my video. All these things keep happening. Where, where was I? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, if that gearbox had a blown due to the fact it had the wrong oil in it, that would have, that would have practically, practically broke the car off, I reckon, because the cost of a new gearbox and one of these is very expensive. Anyway, my third and final question to you, Dave. Are you happy with this automatic transmission? Do you like it or does it cause you aggravation and problems? No, I think it's brilliant, to be honest. This is the first automatic I've ever owned and quite honestly, when I change this car, I will buy another. And I will probably buy another Ford because I'm really, really happy with this gearbox. It's smooth, runs well, and it's reasonably economical. It's good. <laughs> OMG, we have somebody here. If anyone from Ford is listening, we have someone here who actually is liking your power shift gearbox. But I have to say, we have heard horror stories, but I haven't actually had any horror stories here. And this car is, the, is practically the only power shift gearbox Mondeo we ever have come here. He's never had any problems apart from the one we just mentioned, which wasn't his fault. So uh, he's a happy camper with Mr. Ford and he'll definitely buy another one. Well, that's it. Dave, okay. thank you for that, mate. It's all right. My you, you, pleasure. You, you can be on your way home now. Yep. Your pocket's a bit light and now you've been here. Yeah. But hey. <laughs> Okay, folks, that's it for today. Till the next time. <coughs> See ya. Yeah, I'm also in charge of rubbish. <laughs> so for the last time today, See ya!